In this video, we're going to uh, start to investigate one of the ways in which we can multiply vectors together. So far in class and in videos, we've talked about vector addition, we've talked about vector subtraction. Um, we're, in this video, we're going to talk about vector multiplication. So vectors uh, work a little differently than our normal arithmetic. Uh, and in normal arithmetic, there's only one way I know of to multiply something. As it turns out, when we're dealing with vectors, there are two different ways to multiply them. So we, we define two different vector multiplications. That might seem weird to you, uh, and it's probably if it does, it's probably because you've never thought about multiplication and you know normal multiplication or normal addition or normal subtraction having a definition, right? You don't learn the definition of those things when you're learning how to add and subtract or multiply when you're in first, second, third grade. They just teach you the mechanics. They don't tell you the definition. But those operations are rigorously defined. And if you take some advanced math classes, you'll start to see the definitions of those operations. So all we're going to do here is define a way in which we can multiply these two vectors together. There, as I said, there are two ways we can do it. One is called the dot product or the scalar product. Sometimes it's called the inner product. Another way is called the uh, cross product, which is sometimes called the vector product or the outer product. We're going to deal in this video with the dot product. And that the notation looks like this. Vector A dot vector B. And that is supposed to be a dot. Um, and as I said, this is sometimes called the scalar product, and that's because a dot b, which are vectors, results in a scalar, right? So this is equal to some number. We will see in the other way we can multiply vectors, the cross product, we get a vector out of that. But in this case, we just get a scalar. So let's define it. a dot b is defined, remember the three lines is math, math speak for definition, uh, that's magnitude of A times magnitude of B times the cosine of the angle between them, in this case I've called that theta. So you can see we're going to get a, a scalar out of this, magnitude of A is a scalar, magnitude of B is a scalar, cosine of theta is a scalar, right, it's just a number. So I'm going to get a, um, a scalar out of this. This is the definition. As it turns out, this is not usually the uh, the most efficient way to calculate it, or at least for our purposes, this is usually not the way we go. And that's usually because we don't know at least one of those things. We, we either don't know magnitude A, we may not know magnitude B, we probably don't know the angle in between them. Of course, if I know the vector form of A and B, I can figure that out. But this is just this is this form is not normally where we go. So let me show you, because this is a quick and dirty introduction to vectors, uh, how we normally do this. So a dot b, in addition to the definition, may also be calculated like this: a sub x. That is the scalar x component of a. So take the x component of a, which we all know how to calculate. Take the magnitude of that. That is the that is what I'm writing as a sub x, right? Let me just point out a sub x does not equal vector a sub x, right? Not it, that, Those are not the same thing. When I write it without the arrow, that is the magnitude. So I've got a sub x magnitude times b sub x. And now, since these are both scalars, this is normal multiplication. We know how to do that. Plus a sub y times b sub y. Now, I've given you a two-dimensional example. If I have a three-dimensional problem, I can extend this. I'm going to have another term over here, right? a sub z times b sub z. That's bad handwriting, but you get what I'm saying, right? So if I have a three-dimensional problem, I'm going to have three additive terms. I have three products, which I'm going to add together is maybe a better way of saying that. If you go on to take a linear algebra class, which you absolutely should, you will find that um, you can have n-dimensional vectors, right? We don't have to stop at 3. You can have 9, 10, 30, 11 billion components to your vector, and you can define vector products, or sorry, not vector products, scalar products for vectors of that size. In physics, we have a three-dimensional universe, so it's typically where we stop. 
Uh, in this example, I'm doing two dimensions, but this is easily extendable to three dimensions. All right, so not, let's actually see how to calculate that. I'm going to go to the next page, and I'm just going to make up some vectors. These probably will not correspond to the uh, images I drew uh, on the previous page. Let's just say that A is 3i plus 2j. There's my two-dimensional vector. And we'll say that B then, well, uh, let's go 4i minus j. Why not? So I've got two two-dimensional vectors, and I'm going to form the dot product. A dot B should be a dot there. Okay, so my formula says AX times BX, magnitudes, right? So my I can peel off that information just by looking at these equations because my AX is 3I. My magnitude then is just 3. Remember, the I hat has a magnitude of 1. So when I take the magnitude of 3I, I just get 3. So my A sub X is 3. And of course, there will probably be units associated with this. I'm leaving them off for simplicity. 3 times b sub x. Well, same argument. b sub x is 4i. The vector form, that means the magnitude is just 4. Right? And then plus a sub y, which is 2, times b sub y, magnitude, which is minus 1. So I get 3 times 4 is 12 equals... Um, 2 times negative 1 is minus 2, so I get 12 minus 2, which is equal to 10. So whatever units I have there, that's my dot product, A dot B. I hope this was helpful. Like I said, it's quick and dirty. There's a lot more that you can talk about uh, with uh, vector multiplication. I should point out, uh, vector division is undefined. That is, you can... Divide a vector by a scalar, just like you can multiply a vector by a scalar, uh, but there is no such thing as dividing by a vector. That is an undefined operation. That's another way in which vector mathematics differs from the traditional arithmetic that we know. Uh, they're just different beasts. If you're interested in them, as I said, please take go to the math department and take a linear algebra course. You will learn everything you've ever wanted to know about vectors and uh, it will only serve to help your understanding of your field. Alright, I'll see you in the next video.